Hey, I'm the M1 MacBook Air. And I'm the brand new M2 MacBook Pro. Brand new? <laughs> Look at yourself. How can you call yourself new? You're old. Well, I may be old, but I'm young at heart. Uh, I have a new chip. Get it? <laughs> I'm feeling spunky. <laughs> uh, that would be your brain? Okay? Your chip is your brain. Why would anybody be interested in you if the rest of you is so old? Plus, there's a little rumor I heard that even with your shiny new M2 chip, you're slow. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Nobody wants me. <laughs> so, as you've seen on many channels and on this channel, the first generations of the M2s are not exactly a home run for Apple, at least not yet. While the M1s really hit it out of the park right away, Apple's decision to put the brand new M2 SoCs into a really old 13 inch body is a really puzzling one. Especially because their first shipment, their very first machines that were out, were the lowest spec model with 256 gigabytes of SSD and eight gigs of RAM, a configuration that nowadays makes it really hard to to recommend for software developers, especially when there are less expensive and more performant options out there. Like take even the M1 MacBook Air. Not a good first show of the M2 Apple. Not a good first show. But perhaps there is a greater plan here. Allow me to elaborate what I'm thinking. Now, two months ago, I came out with a video that says Apple made a mistake. And this is regarding the M1 and how early they released such an incredible machine as the MacBook Air M1. I don't know if it was early or not. They had it, they released it. It was an, an incredible machine and it was such a home run right out of the box, which is, I guess, a good thing because that's how the M1s caught on and Apple Silicon caught on. And now this whole craze is going all over the industry. Even Microsoft is planning to release ARM boxes by the end of this year, which I'm gonna be reviewing by the way. So if you're interested in those, consider subscribing. Oh, that's next to the like button. Appreciate it. Thanks for your help. Anyway, getting back on the subject, the M1s were so powerful that Apple might have realized their mistake in letting consumers have too much power in too small a package right away, which made uh, the M1 Pros and the M1 Maxes that were released in 2021 not as huge a leap as the M1s were. Then there's the M1 Ultra, and you know, you know what happened there. It's okay, the M1 Ultra is okay, all right, relax. It's just not as great as we hoped. So what I'm thinking happened here with the M2s and the first generation of the M2s is Apple maybe reined in some of their oomph, so to speak. Now, while right now they are still kind of the champion as far as performance per watt and the proliferation of their products in the market, at least in my opinion, maybe they decided to cool it a little bit for the M2s and wait for the bigger releases that are coming later on. But I'm not gonna speculate on that because that's not what I do on this channel. Well, sometimes I do that maybe, but it's, it's fun to speculate. I just don't like making things up like, oh, M3 Ultra Extreme confirmed. No, nothing's confirmed until Apple says so and they keep that stuff very sealed up. Getting back in the subject though, there's still a chance for the M2s to shine before the M2 Pros and the M2 Maxes come out. And that might be in the M2 MacBook Air. And I hope that it does because the M1 MacBook Air is still one of the best buys out there. Even now, even with the M2 MacBook Pro out, I would still suggest go out and buy those last few M1 MacBook Airs that are around that are still available because they're great. Just my opinion though. And you can watch my whole breakdown that I did um, a couple months ago on which machine for which software developer type you should get, where I go into more details about why the MacBook Air is so good. But the M2 MacBook Air that's about to be released has a new design, and I hope it's not gonna be plagued by some of the things we've seen from the MacBook Pro with the old design. So I do suspect that Apple is holding their cards close to their chest and not releasing all the power all at once this time around. That's why the M2s are better than the M1s, but they're not just a lot better. The problem with the initial release of the MacBook Pros, the 13 inch variety with the M2 chips is that the shipped hard drives were extremely slow. You can see that in my unboxing video and in my subsequent video about that. And yes, probably if you did get a larger hard drive, like a 512 or a terabyte, you're gonna have more than one NAND chip in there. And therefore the write speed and the read speed are gonna be 
going through multiple channels, making it faster. However, given that Apple has been putting stuff in an old box and it looks like they've just had all these old boxes laying around that they wanted to get rid of by packaging in a new M2 chip in there, do you think that there's a possibility that some NAND chips remained from the old generation that Apple is just trying to get rid of? I think so. There is a possibility of that. I don't know, but I think that might happen. So did the M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch end up with old drives? Possible. When I get the MacBook Air, I'll be doing some tests on that to see if the drives are faster or not. But just to conclude the video, can I recommend the M2? Well, it's too early to say. I'll have to test out the MacBook Air once uh, those are released. So do consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss those tests. But can I recommend the M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch, the one that was just released? Well, I was kind of inclined to also defer the answer until I test the 24 gigabyte model, which I also ordered. Yeah, that might have been a mistake. I don't know. But let's just assume for a moment that it'll be a great performer with lots of RAM and fast SSD chips. When I look at the price point uh, where that machine will land, I can definitively say no, it's not worth it. I said this before, even before getting the machine. And now that I have tested the machine, my opinion remains the same. And that is, don't get it. And furthermore, don't let Apple get away with this shit. All right, folks, it's been fun. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>